hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new review for the real housewives of beverly hills season 13 episode 19 reunion part 2 if you are new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel share with a friend hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time i upload a video now child let's get into it if we gonna get into it when the episode first opens up child kathy is in the dressing room spilling tea and getting glam and i just want to know what is kathy doing now like what is going on anyway Andy picks up with Kyle and Dorit's relationship. Kyle is saying that Dorit cares about the audience. Dorit is trying to defend herself and Garcelle pipes up and she's like, why can't you ever just say I'm sorry? I shouldn't have done it. Okay, now Garcelle, in this case, I gotta ride with Dorit because that's not true what Kyle is saying. Like, okay, so this is the thing. I know that you don't like Dorit, but you need to like think about exactly what happened. Kyle wants people to just blindly follow her and whatever it is that she says. Dorit was the only one to go into the dressing room and check on Kyle after she had this breakdown because her sister was being mean to her. So in Dorit's defense, which I never thought that I would do, honey, I know some people gonna get mad, but listen, I try to be fair across the board. In Dorit's defense, when she said I'm allowed to speak, freely and apologize which i'm doing i mean to be honest i feel like kyle just wanted to be upset with dorit she just went home and thought about being mad girl your misdirected anger is showing you need to be mad at kathy not dorit and you ain't mad at lisa renna isn't lisa the one that caused this whole thing oh, okay moving forward so dorit tells garcelle it's okay for her to defend something that's not true garcelle just let them take care of that Andy then asked Kyle about her sobriety. She said, you know, it feels great. So then he asked Dorit how she thought her not drinking was influenced by Morgan. And she said, I don't really think that she influenced it. I don't. So then a viewer asked why they were being insensitive to Kyle's sobriety. Garcelle was like, no, I think we were on board with it. But every now and then we were like, hey, are you really doing this mocktail thing? You know, it was in jest. So then Erica said, I think if Kyle had a drinking problem, it would be different. I mean, we wouldn't have said, are you sure you don't want to drink? And I mean, I agree with that. But at the same time, I did feel like y'all were kind of pushing the issue. Like every second, it was like, Kyle, are you really not drinking? Like, get over it. So then Kyle says, you know, she's always worked out because Dorit was saying there was something just a little bit more different about Kyle. Kyle's like, you know, I've always worked out because my sisters were thin and and if she were being reckless, then maybe they could talk. So then sudden pipes up. She said, no, I think you were being reckless because you said I had a drinking problem that I don't eat. That is reckless in and of itself. I know that's right, sudden. Get her together. Get her together. And I agree with that. That was reckless as hell. And it was ridiculous. Yeah, Kyle will swear up and down that sudden was a bad friend to her. Okay, here go Kyle. No, I never said you had a drinking problem. Sutton said, no, you didn't bring it up, but you insinuated. Did you or did you not insinuate that? Kyle is getting ready to explain. And as Kyle goes to answer it, Sutton is, you know, coming with a sense of urgency. Like, come on, answer it. Come on, quickly, quickly. Name it, name it, name it. Y'all know how she likes to do. Now, I'm sorry. I know we love Sutton, but that annoys me. Like, give people a chance to process what you just asked them and then let them answer. Like, I know she doesn't want them to stall to come up with a lie, but they're going to lie either way. So please just wait so that they can come up with what they want to say. So Sutton is saying that Kyle was dropping seeds. So Kyle switches it back on to Sutton like she likes to do. And now she's the victim. So I mean, you didn't even ask me about my jewelry. You never asked me, are you okay? Do you need anything? So Andy asked Crystal if she thought that Kyle was planting seeds. And Crystal said, I mean, yeah, because I feel like you guys were talking about it. The two of you together because she absolutely was. Kyle always has an excuse. Just admit it. Now, see, Garcelle, this is when you jump in and say, Kyle, can you ever just admit what you did wrong instead of turning it around on sudden like you've done for consecutive seasons? And Kyle, you even tried to employ Anna Marie and don't think I forgot. You are always playing the victim. So then Kyle said, well, those words will never come out of my mouth. Sutton said, yes, that's because you like to play chess. They will never come out of your mouth. You know exactly how to play the game. And that is absolutely true. 
Kyle gets upset and says that Sutton is coming across entitled to her business. And she had already mentioned it when they went to that little retreat or whatever it was. And Sutton was like, no, you didn't mention it. And everybody's like, no, she did say that it was the hardest year of her life. She did. She said that she's had the hardest year of her life in her marriage. So then Dariq says, well, you say you had the hardest year. You didn't say you and Mo were struggling, baby. That's what that means. If I tell you in my marriage, we've had the hardest year. That means that we're struggling with something. Here go Kyle. What makes you so entitled to think that you are owed an explanation of everything that's going on in my bedroom? Kyle, are you a hypocrite or are you a hypocrite? Because in seasons past, you have made it seem like you and Mauricio had the perfect relationship and everybody else had to share whatever they've done. But now you don't. So then son's like, we all have to share our lives. She started talking about her kids going to college. My children are learning They're, you know, Portia is 13 years old. They're getting engaged. There's been rumors about my marriage. I had two siblings on the show. My life has fallen apart. So don't talk to me about what's going on in my life. You brought a horse this season and you have a dating coach. What? Kyle, not you running down to every day, running the meal things that you have shared. And all of a sudden did was buy a horse and have a dating coach. Ashley Sutton shared quite a bit. She did. She had the dating, Mr. Ed, Merce in the purse, the thunder down under meltdown. To be honest, truth be told, y'all all could have done better. Okay, y'all all could have done a better job at sharing a little bit more. But this season was really carried by Sutton. Let's just keep it real. I mean, I know that some people may disagree with that. Well, Sutton, no, Sutton actually did share some things. Okay, Garcelle shared a little bit about her sons and this and that. Dorit gave us nothing. Erica keeps saying, I can't discuss it. I have no idea. The victims are the victims. Well, when you're in a case, you can't really discuss it. Okay, girl. So then you need to go. Because you're giving Robin over on Potomac. Well, y'all can't share a damn thing. So therefore, in thus and such, you can go as well. Moving forward. Well, baby, what she said at first, Sutton was offended. She said, we all share our lives. Kyle said, oh, no, that's not true. Kyle, yes, it is. Kyle said that Sutton said that they're not allowed to talk about her ex and he's a very powerful man. Sutton is like, that's a lie. She's like, well, you want me to spill everything about my marriage, Kyle? And again, you didn't share anything. Okay, anything at all. And as they're panning the camera over, I see Anna Marie looking sudden up and down. Well, basically the whole right side of the couch because, you know, she wants to be on the team. I guess she's trying to take Lisa Renna's spot. Child, please. So Andy asked Crystal if she felt like Kyle was insinuating that Sutton had a drinking problem. And Crystal said it was more so Dorit insinuating it. Dorit said, I don't know. I don't know if she has a drinking problem. And so Sutton said, no, I want you to repeat that. You just said, I don't have a drinking problem. Repeat that. She said, no, I don't know if you have a drinking problem. I don't know. She said, then say it loudly. Say it more clearly. She said, I, I've just said, like, she said, what did you say? Said, I don't have any evidence. I mean, I'm not with you all the time. I don't know. I don't, I, no, I don't know. No, Dorit, you know exactly what you were saying. You and Kyle did that on purpose. You did. But Sutton ate her up. She said, I don't know if you have a drinking problem either. Carcass out. I don't know how many carcasses are on the floor every night. Now that's a read. <laughs> Baby. Oh, Sutton ate her up. Y'all know what annoys me so much about Dorit? How every time someone says something, she looks so appalled. Like, how dare you speak to me that way? That face that she makes really pisses me off. Because it gives... I'm better than you. And how dare you speak to me the way that you are? It is so annoying. So anywho, they both know what they were saying, honey, when they said it. Dorit always acts so oblivious to what she does. It really irks me. So then next, they talk about Denise at the Mary Jane party. A viewer, like many of us, thought that Denise's attitude was about the whole Brandy Glanville rumor. So then Andy was like, well, I, you know, I thought so too. But then I was wondering why she wouldn't talk to Erica about it. Like, why wouldn't she say anything? So then Andy asked Dorit what was going through her mind when she was trying to correct Denise about her coat. Denise might as well have come to the reunion. You can tell that there is nothing to talk about. Are we really talking about Dorit trying to fix her upside down coat? Is that what this has come to? So then Andy brings up Erica saying PK and Dorit were the next to divorce. They may last, honey, because he always in London. Catch it. Honey, catch that tea. 
and it reads a comment saying that Dorit must be on a budget because of the wardrobe change and the hair. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. Down in Spain, Dorit was looking like a mom at Disney World in the 90s. Okay, from the scrunch socks to the kids to the Oshkosh Bigosh overalls. Honey, it was given very much. We got to scrimp and save, honey. That's what it was given. Dorit starts to explain and Andy starts to yawn. And now we have a reunion. <laughs> baby if andy does not yawn we do not have a beverly hills reunion that yawn should be in the bravo clubhouse mm -mm -mm. now either dorit bores the hell out of him or her voice is really soothing i'm gonna go with the boredom because not three consecutive years of yawns child this is a fool moving forward so dorit said that the brown hair was a choice she was ready for a change and she's on nobody's budget anyway girl please andy brings up the other robbery that took place with dorit when she had the money during christmas dorit said that she went into marshall's and they're like marshall's girl what not marshall's she said she went into marshall's and they had stolen her bag when she turned around to look for it it was gone so the camera showed that three men had followed her there and they basically targeted her dorit Honey, I don't know if you frequent Marshall's often or any store for that matter, but you never leave your purse unattended, especially at Christmas time. There is no reason for you to turn around for a brief moment. You always have your hand on your bag or always have your, ba your bag on your arm. Like, girl, you don't leave no bag in the, like, I don't know where you were, but I don't care where you are. People steal. So then they go to the comment that Garcelle made about the jewelry after the robbery that she had, you know, when the polite robbers left the phone by the gate. So Garcelle said, well, you know, I believe that you were robbed, but some things were just a little bit off. So Dorit wants to know, what are those things, Garcelle? She said, your ring, for instance. So she said, well, what happened was my ring wasn't in its normal place because we had just got done traveling. So that's the, that's the reason for that. So then she brings up how polite the robbers were leaving the phone by the gate because she asked them nicely. So then Dorit said, well, I told them that I wanted to call my husband. They were threatening to unalive me and I was crying and I asked nicely. Garcelle said, okay, it was strange. I mean, it was. Plus they left the light on the phone, honey, like Motel 6. They left the light on for you to get your phone by the gate. Now, do I think that that was wrong of Garcelle to say? Yes, it was. Because whether she made it up or not, she wants the people to believe it. And quite frankly, I feel like this is where it comes in where I think that the cast they're paying attention to what the viewers are saying because Garcelle is just repeating what everybody was saying on Twitter. A lot of people were saying that things didn't quite add up. Now, like I said, when I did that review, do I think that Dorit is aware of what allegedly was set up? No, I don't. But do I think that story sounds funny that a person that is robbing you will leave your phone politely with a light for you to find it to call your husband? Yeah, that don't make no sense to me. Moving forward. Now, Garcelle apologized, but I don't think that she meant it. So then Sutton said that PK had a woman in the car when he got pulled over for the DUI. Sutton said, look, I got it from the streets. Child, not the same streets Mama Joyce be listening to. Mama Joyce be listening to the Atlanta streets. Now, I have seen you hanging out with Cynthia Bailey. Now, I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> I was just playing Cynthia. Mm, 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 child, not the streets. Erica said the streets of Beverly Hills. Yes, the streets of Be the mean streets of Beverly Hills. She said that PK went in on her. He went to IG and read Sudden for Filth. Andy brings up Julia Roberts saying that PK should have actually given the necklace that he got for the whole pretty woman setup to dorit pk cannot give anything to dorit because he don't have the money let's just be real so then andy brings up the reports of them living separate lives she said well i mean we were going through a time and he was staying in the hotel with boy george girl what all that money y'all claim to have and he has to share a hotel with boy george see this is what i'm saying dorit things don't be making sense your husband is sharing a hotel room with boy george okay so andy said well i mean you were living separate lives she's like no we weren't you know he was at the hotel andy said okay it's semantics so dorit said no actually it's not because you know words have weight andy 
what words have weight that y'all see when Garcelle turned to uh, Crystal and said, oh, words have weight. So this is the thing. Words have weight when it comes to you. But when you say anything to anyone else, we're all supposed to be like, well, she didn't know. She didn't mean it. She didn't know. No, ma'am. Words have weight. So make sure you take that into the next season with you. So then he asked how they are now. And she's like, better than ever. But are you? Because why did you pause for so long? That pregnant pause told me that y'all are not good. The way all the women looked around, I said, oh, baby, they're not believing that. I have to say this, though, y'all. Dorit is getting it every which way. I, and I don't think Andy likes Dorit too tough either. I, I don't think he does. I think he keeps her, but I don't think that he likes her. So Dorit said, you know, that PK stopped drinking. So things have been so much better. You know, it's amazing to me that you can say that PK stopped drinking, but yet you and Kyle sat and insinuated that Sutton had a drinking problem when the call was coming from inside the house. Hmm. Moving forward. So then we move on to Kyle and what she was going through in her marriage. Dorit said that she was hurt, that Kyle didn't tell her when she was telling her things about her marriage. Why weren't you telling me things about you and Mauricio? Dorit said she saw things on Instagram. And Kyle was like, I wanted you to call me and I'd wait until there were cameras in my face to talk to me. And don't y'all live down the street? She act like she was walking to your house every other day. And Dorit, obviously y'all are co-workers. Let's just call a thing a thing. So then we move on to Erica's package and her redemption arc. So Andy congratulates her on her special and her residency. I'm like, child, not Erica being rewarded for bad behavior. Okay. So then Andy brings up Sutton saying that Erica's tickets were $7. Sutton said, I was kidding. You ladies can't take a joke. The guy was saying that they were $1. I was saying that they were 7 Erica always makes inappropriate jokes. So I'm sure she'll be quite all right with this $7 ticket. Because, honey, I heard the same thing, truth be told. Andy asked why she broke her rules for Lent to go off on Denise. She said Denise asked for it. I wasn't bothering her. I tried to walk away. You know, the first time I didn't say anything, but she just kept on. So, I mean, basically she get what she get and she don't pitch a fit. So then Andy asked about her showing empathy to the victims. She said, I couldn't say anything or respond the way others would want me to. So it seemed like I didn't have any empathy. Erica, you did not. You had to actually ask your therapist, how do you get empathy? Where can I buy that from? Do they sell it in Neiman's? Like, where am I going to get the empathy? Where? So Erica, no. And you can sell it to somebody who's buying it. Andy brings up the meeting with the victims. She said that she was advised to sit down with them so they can see her outside of the reality show. Okay, so the thing is, you went because you were instructed to go. Because it's a part of your redemption. You didn't go because you really feel anything for those victims. Got it. So then Andy asked her, if she can say what she was doing when she sat down with them. She said, I can't, but I can tell you that I found out one of my paychecks was in a client trust. Okay. And I think they should keep it. Don't you? The left side of the couch finds a way to bring things back to them. They want the right side of the couch to take accountability and responsibility for everything that they say. But on the left side of the couch, they're allowed to say whatever, give an excuse and put a period on it. And no further questions, your honor, pun intended. It just kills me. I'm looking at this and I'm just like, this is just so one sided. Now, we all know that Erica said that Tom has dementia. They're saying that he's going to be able to stand trial. So Crystal said, as someone who has worked with people that have dementia, what he had would have been progressed by now. So I don't see how he can stay in trial. So Erica's like, I'm just trying to figure out, are you saying that he's faking it? She said, no, I'm saying it's surprising, that's all. They think that Erica is lying, but how can Tom take the stand in his current state? Who would even advise that? That doesn't make any sense. They then revisit Sutton Slacks in Vegas, honey, because we're going to skip right on past Erica because she ain't talking about nothing. Andy asked what Sutton thought was going to happen at Magic Mike. She said she thought that it was going to be a different type of experience. Basically, she thought that it might have been a strip club. She said that she did overreact and she didn't like, you know, Erica dropping down and getting her eagle on. OK, I can't say certain words on YouTube, so we're going to go with that. Sutton brings up the elevator and them conveniently being in it. 
Erica claimed, no, I couldn't set that up. I didn't set that up. Here go, Dorit. It's almost impossible. And Dorit, again, this is why people don't believe what you say. It's not impossible. That elevator was timed perfectly. Let's just be real. Erica sent those men a text and said, we're getting on the elevator now. You can confront her. And they met them there. Please stop it. Just please stop because y'all really think that we're stupid and y'all trying to gaslight us, gaslight sudden, all the gases are lighting. So then sudden said, you know, I was just in a funk because my ex had told me that he was moving to London and that I was moving and that, you know, my son was moving. And Andy said, but you're divorced. So how can he tell you what to do? Sutton said, he's always told me what to do. Okay, but I told him that I'm not going anywhere. So then she tells Kyle that Kyle hurt her feelings because she said all she had was cashmere and a horse. Kyle said, that was a joke. But I said it because of what you said about me. Oh Lord, here we go. We find out that Sutton gets $300,000 a month from her time on Watch What Happens Live she said that's what she gets in spousal support but that's after taxes child does he have a brother i'm tired of work <laughs> baby move me to london friends paris and i don't care where you move me three hundred thousand dollars a month so then andy asked anna marie if she thought that you know sudden was showing out when she mentioned it here go anna marie well i come from a world where we don't do that we don't discuss money well baby you're in a world where we do now, this is not the earlier seasons of these franchises, but in that world, we showed the price tag for everything. And truth be told, she was asked the question. She didn't just go in there and bring it up. She doesn't sit around with different women. You know, I get $300,000 a month. He asked her about it and she answered. So then they bring up Teddy doing Kyle's dirty work, talking about Sutton. Teddy, please go away, baby. Okay. Now, I never really had a problem with you like everybody else had a problem with you, but you just won't go away. Just go away. And Sutton was like, yeah, you know, she was doing Kyle's dirty work. Kyle's like, no, I just sat there and didn't say anything because I'm not in it. Sutton, listen, you are absolutely right. She was doing her dirty work, just like her and Dorit wanted Anna Marie to do their bidding with the whole esophagus thing. They really think that we're stupid. So now Kyle and Sutton are going back and forth and forth and back. So Sutton said Kyle has been relentlessly mean to her. She said, when? Kyle, you don't remember? Okay, how convenient. Sutton said, I'm going to say this just like Denise. Watch the show. And that was the end of Reunion Part 2. Listen, to me, the reunion kind of fell flat for Part 2. I feel like we're just finding anything to talk about because if we have to talk about Denise and her coat being upside down, then we really have nothing to talk about. My, uh, nobody gave anything y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about reunion part two please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel and as always stay safe stay blessed spread love not germs peace